new transmission filter on. Getting the old one off was a bear. Um, couldn't get up the filter wrench. Actually, hurt my shoulder trying so hard to get off with the filter wrench. So then I went to the old uh, foot long screwdriver, pounded through the side of it. Couldn't get it with that. So then I said, screw it, and I put a two foot long pry bar through the filter. And then I was able to get it to spin with that much leverage. I think it was really on there. But uh, the new one is on there, filled, primed, just started it. I don't see any transmission leaks right now. Um, I dried everything up. I'm gonna let it, after I ran it, went through the gears. I'm gonna let it sit overnight and see if I see any drips on the ground tomorrow. Back at work, dirty hands, once again. Here's the farmhands bus. Uh, Tim's bus is back. They put about 5,000 miles on it since the last time they were here, um, which was what, about a month and a half ago, I think. A little, little over a month ago, at least. And a um, couple things. One, the transmission has an oil leak on it. Uh, it's pretty significant. So we're going to tackle that. Uh, number two, the brakes. Uh, he wants them readjusted. And 5,000 miles, if you don't have... You know, these, these don't have auto slack adjusters, so you need to keep on top of them. Uh, 5,000 miles of driving is quite a bit, and they're definitely out of adjustment. Uh, I went ahead and did them. Uh, the tags were really bad, which I knew they would be, because remember, the tags had not been, they had been inoperable for seven years. So somebody had disconnected the, the system and just left it disconnected, and he did not know that. Um, so he reached out to the previous owner and found out, you know, when it got done, and that's how long it had been. So... Uh, so the drums had significant rust on the inside of them, and I knew it was going to take, uh, you know, the clearance and tolerances weren't there for, you know, at the beginning, it wore that rust, that thin layer of rust away, and then, so they were definitely uh, about about one and a half full turns on the adjusters out. Um, they were still working, but they just weren't working as effectively as they should have been. Uh, the drives were about a revolution, maybe one and a quarter revolutions out of adjustment, um, which isn't that bad, uh, you know, maybe... 30%, 40%, uh, probably 30%, um, closer that I could have got it. And then, uh, the fronts weren't bad at all. They were like a, not quite a half a turn out of adjustment. So just to give you an idea, 5,000 miles of pretty hard driving, there's a lot of hills stopping, things like that. So you, you can't just adjust them, you know, once every couple of years and, and think that you're good to go. You need to stay on top of it. So, 
Uh, my bus, you know, I'll do a 2,000 mile trip and I'll make an adjustment on them and there'll be a good half turn out of adjustment. So anyways, got his brakes all done. Uh, everything's working good. I came down, tested it, came down the hill with it, no problem. Um, it's always easier to pull it up on a few blocks instead of uh, jacking it up. And then uh, I have more blocks that I lay behind it as a little overrun and then I pull them out. So when I go to pull off, I can just yank them out of there. But um, it's easier. And these I switched. So it was, uh, once it's up on there, I can move them to the other side. So we actually backed uh, or pulled forward onto those with the other boards on the other side. And then I'll, now he can just drive away off of it. But I'll pull them out so the tag doesn't run over it. Uh, everything on the engine looks and sounds good. I'm, it's got a couple little oil drips down there, mostly the air compressor. That's our next job. We have a new air compressor to put on it. Um, we're going to replace the air compressor. We just don't have any of the gaskets right now for it. And I wasn't going to get them in time to get this back out. Um, it needed to be on the road for Saturday and uh, I got it dropped off in the middle of the week. So, uh, that's our next project. Um, we're going to order all the gaskets for the air compressor. Probably go ahead and replace the air governor too while we're in there. And while I have the air compressor off because I have to drain the cooling system, he wants to put a block heater in it at the same time. And the front leveling valve is bad. Uh, it's got some contamination in it uh, because the air compressor was passing oil. It doesn't have an air dryer, but there's still a little bit of oil in the system. So I don't want to replace the leveling valve and risk getting contamination in it again. So we'll uh, replace the air valve once that new air compressor goes on, get the, the air dryer cleaned out and then uh, blow out those airlines um, and we should be good to go there then and so next trip uh, next time it's in we'll uh, go through and, and work on that air system and get that block heater and stuff put in too so uh, they definitely use it a lot they've been traveling to a lot of uh, shows playing their music the farmhands quartet um, that's really neat to you know watch guys that uh, are out and actually uh, playing music and keeping people people happy and stuff so Anyways, uh, it's a great bus, and uh, we'll get into the transmission leaks here and see what's going on with that. So this little cover, we actually replaced the gasket last time, but it needed a thicker gasket, so I've got a cork one to go on there that I made. Um, it's got a little bow to it. It's not completely flat, and I tried to clean it up and tap it back. So hopefully that'll stop his transmission leak. So I was just getting ready to replace the transmission pan gasket here. Um, thinking that's where it was leaking at. But then I really got involved and looked up here. And it's all JB welded together. The corner of this has broken. And it's been JB welded back together. And that's the actual casting of the transmission, not the, um, the pan there. So I'm going to do my best to clean it all up and see what we can do here but it's coming from above it's leaking above the pan not at the pan so it's wet up here so we'll see what we can do we've got two of the three so far we fixed two of three oil leaks on this transmission but this one's pretty significant as i think you just saw it drip there You can see that it's coming from right there. There's like a little crack. Okay, so I drained about three gallons out of the trans, so it'd be below that. Cleaned it up with brake clean, took a screwdriver and a hammer and chiseled all the old JB weld away there. And then cleaned it up as best I could. And, uh, used some right stuff on it and put it on there, let that dry. I filled it, the transmission fluid's full again and it is not leaking at all. So I'm gonna let, um, probably put one more layer of Permatex art over it. Um, there's really no way, I mean, I can't weld the aluminum case back together, especially it's contaminated with oil and stuff without, you'd have to remove the whole transmission in order to even successfully do it. Um, so, you know, th this should get him by and then we'll keep an eye on it and monitor it. Um, the fact that we just discovered that it's had a previous temporary repair like this. At some point, when does a temporary repair become permanent? You know, when it's something like your transmission case is cracked and that's not a high pressure area. The fluid's not under high pressure there. It's not a high torque, you know, where it's not twisting or anything. That's just holding on the pan. Um, if it was my bus, I mean, I would probably 
do just about what we're doing right here now. And who knows how many years ago that JB Weld was put on there and it lasted. Uh, it just finally succumbed to the, the oil and uh, it chipped off in sections. So I just didn't have real good adhesion. So by cleaning it up really good and putting new, this right stuff is oil resistant. It goes on there real hard. I'm going to put two coat, two layers on it though and clean it up a little bit better around the outside. Maybe scuff it up with some sandpaper uh, just to give it real good uh, something to stick to. And I think it's going to last for quite a while again, but we'll see. So I got this real cool flashlight from Olight. It's an MR2 Pro Warrior. Um, I already have one of these in a different paint scheme or whatever. Um, but this one's, I mean, it's same flashlight as different paint scheme. It's very patriotic. Um, I'll put the link to Olight in the description. And um, you can use the coupon code BGM uh, to get uh, a discount on anything that's not already on sale. So otherwise, something they have sales on there and a coupon code doesn't work with a sale. But if you're wanting to purchase something from them, they get, make really, really good flashlights. And saving some money is always nice. But this thing's 1,800 lumens. Um, it throws 300 meters. It's crazy bright. It's rechargeable, uh, lithium ion. Um, it's uh, it, it's a great flashlight. I love the one that I have. But I've, I've got uh, a friend that I've met here in town. His father's a veteran. And um, I, I'm going to give it to him. I, I think that he would really appreciate it. Uh, a, it's kind of patriotic, but he can use a really nice flashlight. So I'm um, just kind of paying it forward and going to give it to uh, a local veteran. I think that's a nice thing to do. But uh, go check out Olight's website. They got really cool, awesome flashlights.